the problem is uh, your cousin, and the other problem is Thanksgiving. Because when you, the stupid fucking trust fund kid who likes to get fucked up in the art world on other people's dimes and your mom and dad's money, when you go home to Thanksgiving, when you sit down at the table, they tell you about your cousin. Because your fucking cousin went to law school and is making money as a lawyer. Or your fucking cousin is a doctor. And they're making money as a doctor. And you ain't spent all that fucking money on your $110,000 M fucking A. MFA, MF fucking A. They spent all that money on your MFA and you don't have shit to show for it. Except, oh, I got a review in my gallery. What, mama? Your cousin just made a million dollars. He's donating to that charity we love so much. Pass the potato salad. You don't understand that money is bad, mom and dad. We paid $110,000 for you to go to that fucking art school. And, and extra five hundred dollars for the abortion when your when your art school teacher knocked you up. <laughs> that was a performance, mom. We credited you in the catalog. <laughs> so that's where the whole art world problem with money comes from. Idiot rich kids perpetuating their bullshit to their students after they get hired at these stupid diploma mills that they overpaid for in the first place. And so, it doesn't matter how much money is spent on any artwork. At the top levels, these people are investing in art as commodity. That $100 million Picasso was not an art collector. That's going to into a safe in Switzerland for 50 years, and then they'll sell it for $200 million. All right? Currency goes up and down. The art keeps its value. It's like gold. We're not having a debate about gold prices. Cash for gold. So to me, it's a non-issue. There's money in the art world at the top levels for people who aren't in the art world. That's not the art world. Seth and and Christie's is not the art world. We have a culture against money from a bunch of rich kids who fetishize money because it's the only thing their family ever gave them. And the only way to rebel is to have art that's to be experienced and not for sale. And they have, is it two generations now? Shit, might be three generations of art school graduates and dropouts have been brainwashed by these hand-packed kids at Thanksgiving. So I'm for money in the art world. I live in a very poor neighborhood. Every person in my neighborhood has an iPhone. Nobody in my, there are three registered voters on a, house, on a street of 17 houses. It's an immigrant neighborhood below the poverty line, and everyone has an iPhone. They don't have a problem with money and the object, but the rich kids who've had everything handed to them do. There, that's my, that is my uh, opening song. I didn't even get the four minutes. Can I save my time in a bank? Um. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm all for money in the sense that I think artists should get paid. I think the art market and artists getting paid has absolutely nothing to do with each other. Uh, and I think that uh, um, Matt actually touched on that. So actually, what I, I I wanted to make a few sort of propositions about you know about the art market. Uh, the art market actually is, in fact, one of the most expanding, uh, you know, a, a, a definitely a boom industry at the moment. Um, and in fact, in, in many ways, that actually is a reflection of the fact that we live in a shitty economy. Because what that means, essentially, is that capital money is actually flowing into a non-productive uh, investment. Because there are, it's, it's, it's easier to, or people believe it's easier to make money speculating than to invest in actually productive. Enterprises, uh, and what I wanted to, you know, get to is, um, you know, well, first of all, I think that it sh we should contextualize the art market. It doesn't exist in a vacuum. It exists in the wider economy, uh, the wider market. And I think, you know, since 2007, we basically had a crash course in what's wrong with the market economy. Um, next. Um, You know what we what we've seen basically is you know the destruction of wealth and essentially, but you know for certain grades of people this is not really a significant thing. For middle class and working class people this is, has been a disaster. Um, 
And what I want to talk about is basically, you know, what the free market is good at in general, not just in the art world, is basically concentrating money at the top of the human. And it does that by essentially miserating, impoverishing everybody else. So it's really good at this, it's very efficient at doing that. Um, we are all screwed because of it, or most of us are screwed because of it. Uh, and this was something that was already evident 150 years ago, 160 years ago, called Karl Marx basically revised the whole theory how this works. Uh, but it was obscured for a substantial period of time because you know there were two competing um, systems that each had to pretend at least to care for the welfare of their citizens. You know, United States, the Western Bloc, and the Soviet Bloc, and we had something called, in this country, the New Deal. In other places, it was called social democracy, and the idea was that if you, you know, didn't take care, if you really let capitalism run right, you would have a revolution sooner or later, and you couldn't afford that. So, you had to take care of people. Since the demise of the Soviet Union in 1989, and the Soviet Bloc, that consideration has gone out the window, and basically capitalism has reemerged as it really is related. Form. Um, so, and the result, you know, is what we see. Uh, you know, we've been seeing not just for the last, since 2007, but actually before that, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's the industrialization and outsourcing, the, essentially the flight of labor to places where it's, you know, lowest paid. Um, market bubbles, the housing bubble being the most recent, the most, uh, you know, painful, um, because, you know, uh, part of the reason for that is there's a, a lot of capital that can't find productive uses and it's essentially invested in speculation. And art is one of those goals and uh, one of those um, things that, you know, we speculate or rich people can speculate on. 10 seconds? All right. <laughs> I'm not going to get Okay, next. Um, and, you know, I think, I, I guess I'll, I'll end up with. You know, I think the art market, like the market in general, is a market which seduces people into thinking that they do one day could be rich. And I think this is how we live with this inequality. And the art market functions like that. Some, you know, there are maybe four or five stars, or you know, a handful of stars. Time up, time up. Well, since he mentioned Karl Marx, I actually did a deconstruction of Karl Marx via astrology. <laughs> <laughs> Karl Marx was a Taurus, Taurus rising with a moon in Taurus. That's a triple Taurus. <laughs> <laughs> All right? That is one stone moon. What does that mean? Karl, well, Taurus is the sign of money, values, and finances. Karl Marx. His fundamental premise is that everything, all relationships, are economic, okay? Well, fine and dandy, but there are 11 other signs of the Zodiac that would like to have their say. So. <laughs> I only have two minutes, so I can't give you every astrological sign, but I can tell you that I've been paid as, up, up to as much as $200 for an astrology degree <laughs> by the parents of spoiled art school kids. <laughs> With money to burn, on their, what you might call education, I call it Tinker Tot Summer Camp Fund in the studio for two years for $110,000. That was my retort. <laughs> Are you a tort? Except that I think you've just symptomized you know, what's wrong, why you know, we keep, in this country, why, why this country is screwed up. Which is basically that we really don't want to face reality, how actually how the market works, how the system works. You know, we basically want to retain this faith that, you know, one day it will get better. I mean, one day one of us can join Bill Gates and uh, whatever it is that, you know, symbolizes uh, being successful in America. Um, and I think, you know, I think specifically for artists, I think the, the issue is that. Artists, I think, as a group, and I, I'm grossly generalizing here, you know, are really invested in the idea that their shit is, you know, worth something, is valuable. I think, you know, all of us at some point, you know, to, to go to the adopter Freudian, Freudian perspective, have this investment, the idea that what we express is, should be acknowledged. I think artists as a group tend to retain that idea. 
Uh, and for some, it comes through. And it's again incredible high. If you are, you know, we all probably know about Pierre Manzoni's cans and shit. Um, you know, if you can't sell their can of shit for the price of gold, which is what they did in 1961. Um, you know, that's an for artists, it's an incredible high. And artists, I think, are plugged into that idea of the market to that extent that one day somebody will show up and you know look at their you know piece of paper with something smeared on it and will buy it and they'll you know, recognize that their innards, their insides are worth something. But I, unfortunately, this only works for a handful of people. Um, and I think what artists have actually done well. It is when there are support structures to take care of them. And uh, those things, as the economy goes south, are basically disappearing. And those things include small gatherers, include family, include teaching jobs, uh, schools, um, and so on. And as the economy goes bad and as inequality becomes worse, those things are vanishing. And support structure for us is vanishing. Uh, that's cool. We have now one minute rebuttal. For rebuttal? Oh, um, um, my rebuttal is I don't like um, lectures, so <laughs> um, uh, when you meet somebody who says money is the problem, talk to them about what school they went to and ask them uh, who paid for it. Uh, it's um, usually mom and dad who made money the good old fashioned way with uh, capitalism. That's what it's called, right? So that's it. That's what I do. How do you say it? How do you say it? It's like, OK, that's there. It's, it's, it's uh, uh, lectures about Marxism are just another commodity. Bam! There you go.
Let's go. Let's go.